welcome back. So second half of the week, there's uh, all kinds of uh, small jobs going on. So this one is uh, the intake tray. And what I've been working on here is getting the linear actuator sorted out there for opening and closing the intake scoop. And this actuator ended up being slightly too long. It's a four inch travel. Yep, and I don't even know why I ordered that one. I really had a three inch in my CAD, but I've decided to go with two inch because we don't really need the scoop to open that far and initially we're actually going to bolt it down and uh, only activate it if we really need extra cooling when we're doing taxi testing. And Jeff and Devin got this little layup done very quickly here. This is on the exhaust rocket tube there for the parachute and they just did a layup there around the skin just sort of close it out there where it uh, exits the fuselage. And Jeff's got a guide coat now sprayed on where he's um, put that fill there on the transition from the wing straight to the wing. And he's also gone there and cut that with the reciprocating saw so you can see the, the break between the two um, wing parts. And uh, here on the uh, transition to the winglet also there, just got the guide coat so that's ready for sanding. And this is the one from the other side. So again, just ready for sanding. Uh, to make it that a nice smooth transition from the strake to the wing. And more in the category of ready for sanding, these are the two elevators, so they just have a guide coat on them as well. Um, not actually sure, I didn't ask Jeff why um, he's going to sand those, but maybe they're going to get another coat of primer. And uh, I'm working on the hinges for the nose gear door here, so he can see, remember I created those last time, and now I'm actually figuring out uh, how they're going to be mounted in here and making sure the geometry all works so this is just sort of testing them in place there and I've got them uh, aligned here with the straight rod through the um, pivot point and then I've just gone and used some five minute epoxy there to bond that little square tube uh, to the hinges this way I can keep them aligned and anyway, you'll see more of that in a minute and then this little uh, panel here is a close out there for the intake tray there and that's going to be where the air sort of flows in coming off the roof of the aircraft. So that has to be there to allow smooth uh, transition of the air so it doesn't sort of dip into that little low area. And here you can see Jeff has now cut out an area there on the lower part of the uh, left uh, floor plane. And that's going to be where the GMU-11 is, which is the Garmin uh, magnetometer. And that's going to be mounted to that, um, that little access panel there. And he's also cut out the access panels there so we can get uh, into where the uh, bell cranks are there for the four plane. And the next thing to do there is create like a little flange for those. And, you know, these are ones because we changed up uh, how everything's run. Those weren't in the, in the CAD. And you can see the other ones there is actually patching those. And so you won't actually see those when it's done. So here's that linear actuator. And then with the hinges there um, in place... And again, this is too long and you see that four inch travel. So I ordered the two inch one. And fortunately, I've got the one inch one, which I can use to um, align those uh, hinges you'll see shortly. So here's the hinges for the nose door. And you can see I've just used a bit of five minute in there to put them in place. And I've got them sitting on that flange in there right now, which is kind of how I had it in the CAD. But I'm a bit concerned that that's not going to allow enough room for when the door opens because of the curvature in the lower fuselage there things are going to sort of hit but anyway i wanted to do a test and uh, see how it works out so i've got a bit of foam there uh, holding the door in place and again i just used some five minute epoxy on there to uh, glue the hinges there to the door and also the hinges have been uh, the other side of the hinges have been glued to the inside there of the fuselage so we'll see how that works out and as you can see it works, but it doesn't open all the way, and that's what I was fearing, uh, just because of the thickness of that flange on the inside there. And uh, in the CAD, I had it a little bit thinner than what we had because of the and because of the build-ups here. So anyway, the trick is I need to notch it out in here, uh, which actually makes it stronger, and that's kind of how everybody does it. But you also have to notch out in the fuselage there where the other side of the hinges lives. So that's a little bit of work as you'll see coming up. So here I'm notching out the second one there just uh, using the little uh, air tool there with the cutoff wheel just to cut the slot. 
And uh, the reason why that door actually is hitting on the fuselage is because it's just everything, the hinges are sitting too high and I didn't actually show it in that last clip there but it's hitting on the outside edge of the door um, about halfway down as it opens because of the curvature of the lower part of the fuselage the side of the, the nose door actually comes into contact with the fuselage and then it won't open any further and as I said because the hinges are sitting and rotating it from a point that's too high and they need to be closer down to the skin of the fuselage so by uh, cutting out these slots there and lowering the hinge point uh, on the doors and also on the fuselage it allows it to rotate in a better um, kind of uh, position in that once it comes down uh, once it comes open it's actually hanging further down and that way it can clear so um, you know that's kind of how I did it in the CAD and I, as I said in the CAD I had it lower so it was able to work out but the other thing that I had to take into account this time was there was a couple of things uh, in the way there and so I um, which forced me to move the hinges further apart and of course the further apart that you have them the more that this problem um, of having them too high is kind of exaggerated so because I had them further apart um, I needed to basically make them lower as well and you can see one of the hinges there that's the one I'm dealing with right now that's right up the front and the other one is about uh, let's see three quarters of the way down and uh, this way you know there's quite a lot of strength up front where it's you know hitting the airflow and the one at the back doesn't matter quite so much you definitely don't want them all the way apart um, and you probably want to have the front one as far forward as you can so you don't get any sort of um, resonance or vibration or whatever happening in the front there so here I'm just using uh, one of the little um, bur dip or burring tools or whatever just to take the foam out of the, out of the uh, inside skin there because this is a cord piece and I think it has like a half inch thick foam in there so I think it's half there yeah, half or a quarter no I don't know anyway uh, so taking that out so when I bond the uh, hinge in there I get a nice um, sort of uh, nice good bond against the outside skin or the, the back side of the outside skin of the uh, door and it was a, quite a lot of uh, work involved in sticking my head up there in, in the nose gear well and uh, doing the same thing basically mark, marking out where I had to uh, take out the core and also take out the flange of those side mounts there on either side of the nose gear and uh, create a nice little recess for where the hinge is going to live and you'll see that here shortly coming up so uh, needless to say got uh, covered in quite a lot of carbon dust when that was happening so I had my mask on as you normally do um, but uh, still get itchy and uh, you know I could wear a suit and stuff but I just want to get it done so second go around of trying it again I've got the hinges kind of just sort of sitting in there I haven't bonded them in just clamped them in place and again I've just five minuted my um, little uh, tube there which you know keeps the hinges aligned and then I take out the rod that's going through the hinge points and then put that in as you'll see shortly and you can see uh, Jeff's in the process now of uh, putting in these little um, flanges there on those openings for um, the lower skin of the uh, foreplane and I wanted to show you there there's the mounting there for the pitot tube you can see it's just mounted to one of the ribs there on the bracket that we got and uh, so here we are back up in the nose and again uh, now I've got it uh, in place there with the everything set in and as you can see it basically closes and comes open uh, all the way now so and obviously that tube won't be there that's just holding the hinges to keep them in alignment I could pop it off right now but um, anyway so that's moving along and uh, here's the intake actuator there and you can see I've got it uh, in behind there now and this was just positioning it and drilling some holes in there to Clico in it uh, to put the um, the uh, the mounting sort of tabs there on there and I wanted to show you this one so this is um, some FR4 that Jeff's had to bond in there to reinforce the spar because of the hole that goes through there where the uh, push rod is and Mark has um, you know been back and forth and and you know just telling us how to reinforce that because you know again this is all 
um, you know, engineering on the fly. And the hole had to be quite big. And you see Jeff hasn't even cut that hole yet, but he's put the FR4 in there in preparation for it. And uh, this is just to strengthen the spar because you put a big hole through it and it's not quite as strong as it used to be anymore. And that FR4 will get a layup over it as well to strengthen it further. And here you can see there's that opening for access to the bell crank. Um, so the flange is in there now. So the little cover panel has somewhere uh, to mount against. And you'll see some nut plates on there shortly. And so here now I'm back in the nose and I moved on to the other side, uh, given that the first one is sort of all aligned and working out. So this one went fairly quickly because I knew exactly what to do. I had, a, had everything already cut out. And you see I've just basically put five minute everywhere. It was really difficult to get in there because I had to five minute while it was all in place there. And didn't have a lot of room to work with but anyway I got it done in place and uh, and it works um, so that one is ready to actually bond in permanently so here you can see there's the actuator now that we had the holes drilled there and clear code um, and Jeff and Devin have gone and bonded that into place and Brit has uh, welded this one up for us so this is um, a little supporting bracket to the, that bell crank the main bell crank for the elevator that comes um, from the or goes out to the elevators has another support so it can be in double shear instead of single shear and you know we knew this was always going to have to be there we just hadn't figured out how to do it yet so Jeff came up with this idea of just um, putting it across there so it's a square tube one by one with some flat plates on either side and it bolts to those guys and then that flat flat plate there will get a hole in it and that'll match up with the bell crank um, just to give it some extra support so you'll see that coming uh, probably next week where we drill the holes in there and uh, get that all lined up but anyway Brit threw that together for us uh, real quickly or welded it for us real quickly and here's the repair on that nose gear actuating arm and as you can see just uh, Brit sort of cut the tube about halfway up and then put the new tube in place or the replacement one and uh, just weld it around there and before you get all up in the panic and stuff about well that's not going to be strong enough he's actually gone and sleeved it as you can see here he put a sleeve in there and um, you know made sure it's a super tight fit in fact he had to press it on there it was such a nice fit and, and it was actually only a nice fit because he actually turned it down on the lathe as well so he just did the top job getting that sorted out so thank you again Britt your work is always appreciated uh, so here's the uh, nose gear door and as you can see working nicely there and my big mess of five minute uh, epoxy there but uh, that's what it took to get it sorted out so now I can sort of undo those hinges there and go to town uh, bonding everything in with some resin and uh, flux and cabo mix so this is um, looking down from the top there and there you can see the hinges again just with the five minute for now just holding them in place so you see the ones on either side and so they need to be um, have some you know resin flocks mix with a bit of cabo in there sort of to bed them in nicely and then a lay up over the top and here you can see I've started already um, I've put the um, resin flocks mix in and that one you saw on the left hand side there already had a lay up over it and I'm just in the process of doing these ones as well so I got the resin and flocks mix in all of them and just doing two layers of the medium uh, weight carbon fiber that we have over there just to sort of set all those up nicely and get them bonded in and this is how it looks on the doors themselves and I still got those um, supporting rods on I'll be breaking those off uh, next week but I uh, got the everything sort of bedded in there and also the layup over it done and likewise uh, Jeff and Devin got the layup done over this guy so those brackets are in there now and just need the longer actuator which will be coming next week and uh, by the end of the day I had these ones done as well so um, with some peel ply just around the edges there just so I don't have to do so much clean up work of getting rid of any sharp bits that might have surfaced there on the edges so that's pretty much uh, how things have worked out for the week anyway um, lastly there's that uh, little flange that Jeff did and you see uh, Jeff and Devin are going to put the nut plates in there for both of those so that uh, skin there for the foreplane the lower skin is almost ready to close out um, and we're actually waiting on some more high sole again which will be here next week and we'll be able to close out that uh, that skin and there's a the little flange he's also putting in for where that uh, GMU 11 is going to be so that's exciting when we get that closed out uh, anyway that's our update for this week and yeah just a lot of little jobs going on but we're getting through the last of the things that need to be done 
So tune in again next week and uh, thanks again for watching. Mm -hmm.